uh, Mawson Gold is a, a gold and uh, a precious and, and also strategic metals exploration uh, and, and moving towards development company. So we have a number of assets in the portfolio. The, the flagship project is the Rayapalot project, which Brian introduced. We've got a million ounces of gold equivalent. We recently did a PEA that outlined a, a very attractive development case, and it shows that Rayapalot's already got what it takes to be a mine, and it's got a little bit of cobalt in it, and that, that's a real strategic lever that's gonna help us get the project port, uh, permitted, push it forward, help get it financed. So it's a great project, but, but it's going to get a lot better and it's going to get a lot bigger as we continue to explore and I'll explain a little bit more about the motivations around the PEA uh, a little bit on in the presentation. But the other thing that's in Mawson's portfolio that's of significant importance, I suppose, is, is uh, in May of 2022, Mawson spun out its Australian assets into a new ASX-listed company called Southern Cross Gold. Uh, they raised a little bit of money down there as part of the IPO, and then they've just raised some more money, and Mawson now owns 51% of that. Southern Cross is a fantastic discovery. They continued on the discovery that Mawson made. It's been a very, uh, very successful capital market story. And we've got to the crazy situation now where our stake in Southern Cross Gold is basically worth Mawson's entire market cap. And, uh, and yeah, owning 51% of, uh, of a discovery like that is certainly a great place to be in. Um, and and, and, and the, the opportunity in Mawson is that you've got multi-asset exploration portfolio, which is, which is asset-backed. And, and I suppose that's what this slide is trying to explain, is that through the value of our shares, uh, through cash and shares in Southern Cross, that's the value of Mawson's market cap. And so you're getting a free, if you want to think about it in this way, you're getting a free hit on a million ounces in Finland and tons of exploration upside in Finland, another project we've got in Sweden, and a well-funded uh, capital market story in Australia, great discovery in Southern Cross Gold, and they'll continue to explore and find more and generate a lot of news. And so we're trading at a huge discount to the fair value of our assets. And so that creates a lot of re-rate potential just in what we already own, just re-rating what we've already owned uh, and surfacing the value in those assets. And then on top of that, the exploration is how you're gonna grow the value. So it's a great opportunity. We've got great shareholders and supporters. And, and it was an important event that uh, Brian referenced was the moving out of Sentient Private Equity Fund. It was a great shareholder, never sold a share, but you know the writing was on the wall. They had to fin close out their fund and it was an overhang over Mawson's share price. And you've seen as that has lifted, Mawson's been allowed to breathe and it re-rated from 15 to 25 cents in December. So just to, just to zoom in a little bit <clears throat> on the Rayapalot project, we're in northern Finland, in Lapland. We've got a very large prospective land holding, and Lapland's a very active region in the world right now for gold exploration discoveries in particular. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people are familiar with Rupert Resources, and they've made a fantastic discovery. They've delineated about 5 million ounces. Uh, about 150 kilometres north of us, and I think that has reminded everybody of what the scale of the opportunity is in this part of the world. The PEA that we've produced on our already million ounce uh, gold equivalent project uh, showed that we've got a great project, it's financeable, it's got good returns, and it's, importantly, it's got low costs, and that was one of the main reasons we did the PEA, was to articulate what it was that we've already got. And it, and, it, and it doesn't represent the end of the project or the end of the exploration story. It sort of, in some ways, represents the start. We've found the mine, and now as we continue to find more, we're going to grow more. Uh, the cobalt we've talked about, and, and it does make it an important project in Europe, given the you know European the Euro, Europe's need for strategic metals. So why did we do a PEA? Look, not all ounces are created equal. A million ounces over here is different to a million ounces over there, and and, and grade is king, but you can't look at grade in isolation of cost. And so uh, really it's about what is the cutoff grade, which is important, and that's underpinned by real costs. And, and by doing the PEA, we've done the engineering, we actually understand a lot about the cost base, and it is a low cost part of the world to do business. And that's what makes projects work, makes them profitable. Uh, and, and it also allowed us as a company to move the permitting forward. We've already started our EIA, and, but you can't permit a mine you can't describe. And we all know that permitting is taking longer and, and that you create value by de-risking projects in that way. 
moving them forward because time is money for you and, and also the person that wants to come and buy you if you've been able to move the project closer to production and de-risk and demonstrate you're able to go through that permitting process. And probably most importantly about the PEA is it, it, it valorises the exploration upside. So we've already, we're not looking for a mine, we've found a mine. Now what we're doing, looking is to grow value in that, in that mine and, and, and through adding ounces, we can now express that in terms of real value, in terms of an NPV, and you say you want to put X million dollars into exploration, you'll find Y ounces, and you return on capital through, uh, through value of, a real value accretive in the project uh, is, is, is Z, and, and that's a compelling investment opportunity to make to sophisticated investors. And, uh, and, and you, you, you have non-linear returns as well. Once you've got a project that's underpinned, you add, add ounces, you can you know, make the project 50% bigger and it'll be worth twice as much. And so when you look at viewing opportunities, you look at other companies, and Brian talked about, you know, valuing exploration companies is difficult. Uh, and so having engineering to understand, well, what is really the cutoff grade? What is a credible development path here? And then you can really start to get your handle on what's the value of the project. So resource growth potential opportunity at Rayaplot is huge. We've got uh, We've got down dip exploration. All of the resource bodies that uh, that go into making the project are open down dip, and there's a there's a credible path there to you know basically double the size of the project. It's really only being drilled to to above 500 metres depth. There's only out of the 555 holes that go into the resource area or the immediate area around the operation, uh, only 12 of them below 500 metres. So it really hasn't been tested to depth. We've got open mineralisation that's continuous and will extend. So it's just a matter of it's meat and potatoes exploration, adding ounces through extending the ore bodies. But stepping out on the original scale is huge potential. So the original discovery at Mawson, oop, go back. The original discovery at Mawson, in fact, was over at Rompus on this Rompus trend. It's still the best hole ever been drilled in, uh, in Finland, six metres at 617 grams a tonne. And, uh, and so we've got gold, a very intense gold event that has thrown, flowed through these rocks, I should say, and, uh, and, and has deposited Rompus. Eight kilometres away, it's deposited Rayapalot, and the opportunity is where is the next one. And so, you know, exploration upside around the mine, that's how you move from one to two million ounces, and this is how you move from two, three, four, five, and you find the next Rupert. Uh, it's just a matter of systematic exploration, which has probably been underdone because of the way the company's been funded and the focus on the existing resource areas uh, historically. So there's a big opportunity to exploit a very large land holding and very prospective area. So just to touch on what is Southern Cross Gold. Southern Cross is a fantastic discovery. It was the third best IPO in Australia last year. Uh, they've continued on, as I said, Mawson's discovery in the, in the, in the Victorian gold fields. It's a historic 80 million ounces producer and it was forgotten until Fosterville really hit its straps. And uh, now Fosterville is the highest grade gold mine on earth. And, uh, and, and <laughs> it's sitting there right outside Melbourne. People don't barely understand it's there. Uh, Sunday Creek is the flagship discovery within the Southern Cross assets and yeah, some and fantastic intersections which has really driven the capital market story in Australia, 306 metres, 2.5 grams a tonne and that's made up of, 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 a, of, of a high number in, in that example, 12 intersections over 20 grams a tonne gold down, down the hole. So uh, a lot of gold is in this area and uh, there's a significant room to grow, grow. We've been drilling out really a postage damp of a, of a much larger mineralized system and it's growing with every hole they're extending it out and making it deeper and uh, Mawson benefits indirectly uh, from a company that's funded now with 16 million dollars or 18 million dollars uh, they're drilling constantly and the results just keep rolling out and so Mawson benefits from exploration in that in that scenario and we've got the tiger by the tail having 51 percent of a company like that is something of significant value and so this is a little bit more about the asset it's got multiple high grade shoots they're extending a long strike at depth and you're building out the ounce profile uh, as they go out and down. And, uh, and that is why it's been such a successful story. People are seeing a very large system pulled together here and uh, with a lot of scope to grow. We're also exploring in Sweden. We've got an exploration property there. We won't talk too much about it. You can come and chat to me about it. But uh, this is an area without cropping gold, had never been drilled prior to Mawson's involvement. We're earning into that project. At seven million ounces has been produced within 22 kilometres and never seen a drill hole. And, and we hit uh, high grades, core 1.8 metres at 30 grams a tonne nearly. 
uh, in our maiden drill program and, and that's an area that we're at a lower level continue to explore and provides additional exploration uh, opportunity for investors. So how are we going to create value? We're going to exploit the property-wide exploration portfolio uh, opportunity at Raya Plot in particular. There's a lot of exploration upside and it just needs to be needs to be pursued and that's how we're going to grow the size of the project. Uh, we've got, we're exploring in Sweden. Uh, we've got now an engineering study. We know where the value exists in the project and how to maximise that through optimising the project economics. Uh, and we're also exposed very heavily to the success of Southern Cross Gold and that provides huge upside for shareholders.